We're headed into week nine, and yes, it's kind of like backup QB mania, but there's no backups here on the Fantasy Goat. We got Jason, we got me, we got the Fantasy Goat started right now. This is the Fantasy Goat, sponsored by Casablanca Resort and Casino, like Vegas used to be. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Fantasy Goat. I'm Mike Davis. That's Jason Feinberg. Jason, as we're kicking off livestock, week nine headed into an interesting week where there's a lot of backup QBs in the fray. I mean, what's going on? Just to make it even worse, you got four pretty good quarterbacks that are on a bye week. <laughs> right. So you have those along with guys that I've never even heard of. You know, uh, you have you have... I hear the name Rippin. I'm like, oh, he's still playing? Oh, that's his son. It's been that long. Yeah, so a, a lot of who's who. And, and a, I noticed a lot of the totals on the games are, are very low right. because nobody has confidence that any of them can score touchdowns. It's going to be interesting. I mean, Jaron Hall, a rookie, getting that start with Cousins now on the IR after that injury to his Achilles season ending. So yeah. that's happening in Minnesota. You also got Clayton Toon, another rookie, maybe in Arizona with, you know, uh, Kyler hopefully coming back soon. So there's a lot of rookie QBs, a lot of backup QBs. It's an interesting week, and that's going to affect a lot of players. Are you playing any of these, like, six, seven backup quarterbacks in any of your leagues? I like Levis a lot, yeah. but I'm, I'm trying to hold off and abstain for a couple more weeks. They just get some information, so we'll see mm -hmm. what happens, but I'm trying to stay away and get more information as things uh, resume in the progressing weeks. Now, yeah. let's also move on now to the brotherly shove. You know, something that I love as a Philadelphia fan, it's been having major success, and we saw, though, this past week was the first time there was a little bit of weariness and uh, issues with the brotherly shove or the tush push. Jalen Hurts, you know, fumbles a snap, really didn't even get his hands on it, so that was a little weird. And then there was also that uh, sweep to DeAndre Swift right. where they scored. So they kind of did a little bit of a shift. So it's been interesting to see this brotherly shove, but we're actually going to go to producer James Edward Barrickman, the fourth. Mm -hmm. Right now, James, what do you think about the tush push or the brotherly shove? Yeah, so whatever you call it, the tush push, the brotherly shove, it upsets a lot of people because they can't stop it. It's been so effective that a lot of people are calling for the league to step in and ban it, saying that, you know, it's not a real football play or – it gives the offense an unfair advantage, but that's just not true. Nobody's as effective with it as Philly. Look at the stats behind this. This is since uh, week eight. Philly was 41 for 44 on tush pushes. Wow. That's 93%. When the rest of the league is 33 of 46, that's 71%. 71%, that's less than the average QB sneak. Other teams just can't replicate what Philly does because they don't have the same personnel. They don't have that stud O-line. They don't have Jalen Hurts, who's just built like a monster. Um, and what really is scary about this whole formation, like we saw last week, they ran that sweep out of it. Right. What else right. can you run? There's so many different possibilities when you have that defense really focused in on stopping the short yardage. So uh, it'll have different fantasy implications, but we'll see where they go. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it, but it's for selfish reasons because I don't have any shares of Jalen Hurts or DeAndre Swift. Right. So for me, I'm, I need uh, Smith. He's my, he's my Philly guy, and he's the last person probably that's going to get the ball on the tush push. It, it, exactly. Yeah. And we've seen other teams try to replicate it, and they just frankly can't. You yeah. know? We've seen the uh, New York, uh, they've tried it, you know, and their quarterback got hurt trying to pull it mm -hmm. off. So, I mean, it's something that is um, – special to Philadelphia and it's unique to them and they can pull it off and I like to see it. Um, and lastly, as we're uh, ending livestock, let's talk about this because this was a big discussion. We can't get out of the, the Kelsey Swift thing on right. this show, but I mean, Jason, let's put it this way. Facts are facts. Taylor Swift wasn't in attendance and guess what? Kansas City and Travis Kelsey lost to Denver. That, that was crazy. Uh, there was more to it than that. I don't think that they were ready mentally for that game. Uh, Mahomes uh, allegedly uh, was had, had flu-like symptoms. I also heard they may have been at uh, the World Series, you know, where right. I, I don't know how much focus they had on this game, thinking since they beat them 16 times in a row. Are they getting too cocky? I is think it so. Too, is it, if once you start dating a pop star of that level, you, right. you, you couldn't help yourself but get cocky a little bit. And now, after Halloween weekend, <laughs> there can, there's a ton of Travis Kelsey's out there. Exactly. I don't even know if the real one's going to show up in Germany. 
You said you saw how many. They could travel to Frankfurt. Yeah, we all, all of them. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> we don't know what will happen, but we definitely got to see Denver's version last week. Yeah. See, good. See what I did. There? Uh huh. Okay. Denver's version. Anyway, guys, let's do this. We got to go into our hole in one player of the week, sponsored by Casablanca Resort and Casino, and of course, it was Dallas Wideout, C. D. Lamb. He had himself a day. It was mm-hmm. basically his career best day. He had a career high, 12 catches, 158 yards, two. TDs, uh, 14 targets. It was a total of 35 fantasy points. He is now wide receiver 10 through eight weeks. So this is another one I'm angry about because in one of the leagues we're both in and I really needed to, to win the game last weekend. I thought my big advantage was that my opponent had CD Lamb, who hasn't done a whole lot, had that one big game. Right. But I thought that was a fluke. And sure enough, the biggest game against me, it, it's only yeah. natural. Guys, coming up after a short break, we got Goat Vision. We're kicking off with QBs, and I'm feeling man, uh, Minshew Mania. I got, I got a little Minshew Mania. It's a little weird. We're going to be talking Rico. about it. Yes, a little right. Uncle Rico. We got that after the break. Before we head to break, in week nine of 2006, which Denver wide receiver tallied 206 scrimmage yards and scored three times in a win versus Pittsburgh? He tallied 41.6 fantasy points and finished as the week's wide receiver one. The answer, after the break. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you which Denver wide receiver tallied 206 scrimmage yards and scored three times in a win versus Pittsburgh back in week nine of 2006. The answer, wide receiver Javon Walker, who played for Denver from 2006 to 2007. Welcome back, kids. All right, so I'm feeling the Minshew mania, Jason, as we're kicking off quarterbacks and goat vision. Listen, Gardner Minshew, it might sound weird that I'm high on him Mm because he had maybe his worst game yet last week against Cleveland. He didn't even complete 56% of his passes. (laughs) But hold on. Let me tell you why I'm feeling him. So he's facing Carolina. They just got their first win last week. Yeah. But They've been giving up the third most yards on the ground to opposing running backs. And we know Indianapolis, Zach Moss, Jonathan Taylor, they're running wild and they're doing a good job. Minshew is all about the play action. So if they can get the running game going against Carolina, that makes Minshew that much more effective with the play action. And that's why I'm actually feeling him as a sneaky streamer with all those buys and backup quarterback situations. I actually like him this week. So it, it sounds like he won't even have to attempt a lot of passes if he's got the uh, if he's got the run game going exactly and that will clear up your wide receivers so yeah he can get a lot of chunk yardage exactly yeah Pittman I, downs I kind of like it and they've been playing high scoring games so he is passing a lot and they're usually behind right. so so yeah no I, I'm with you on that mine is more of uh, kind of like a mystery like it's it's one of the <laughs> mystery the, box it's a mystery <laughs> box it's one of the the rookies uh, Jaron Hall yes. from Minnesota here it's cool because you have Josh Dobbs coming in waiting in the wings doesn't know the offense yet right. but what if what if Jaron Hall uses those weapons he has and that's without uh, Jefferson but still has right. some good weapons and what if he has a great day then what do they do and he did have a decent uh, day when he did fill in. Um, BYU, they, they get a lot of talent into, yeah. uh, into the pros hey, that do a good job. Hey, uh, Steve Young. I mean, there's big yeah. guys that come out of there. Zach Wilson. Zach eh. Wilson, yeah. yeah. But, you know, stranger things have happened. Yeah. So I kind of see you there. Here's a guy I'm not feeling, okay? I'm down on Jordan Love. And yeah. it's not good when the general manager of – Green Bay comes out and says, we're not sure if this is our franchise QB. And that's what the GM did this week. So, listen, Love, he hasn't had a good showing the past three games. Past three games, three TDs and five INTs. And that's against Vegas, Denver, and Minnesota. Games where he should have been playing better. So he's not the guy there. He's not the franchise QB. And he's not a great fantasy option. I'm putting this guy in uh, guys I'm down on because it's the only time probably ever in the history of this show, which I, you know, which I I know will have a long future, where I can say that Patrick Mahomes I'm down on, but for good reason. You saw what happened. Uh, It didn't it didn't help that none of his wide receivers could catch the ball. So, but still, they, he will bounce back. Listen, everybody has an off day. Even Jason, even Jason Feinberg has an off day. Yeah, it's once in a blue moon. 
but it happens, it happens. every so often. <laughs> All right, let's go to running backs now. So uh, here's where I'm at. I'm actually high on uh, Daryl Henderson in okay. uh, Los Angeles. You know, of course, a lot of this is dependent upon, you know, Stafford and this injury to his thumb. So right. I think that's going to be bad for, obviously, Nakua and Cup, and they might be relying more on the run game. But here's why I kind of like this. So they're facing Green Bay. They've given up the third most fantasy points to running backs and the second most receptions to running backs. So Henderson's going to get a lot of volume. He had about over 50 yards receiving last week. So uh, in a week where, you know, Stafford could play but could be injured, right. they might have to go to ripen. You know, it's one of those things where he could be a good play. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody, uh, you know, they all, everybody has, uh, first of all, he is a veteran. Yeah. And, uh, and he has shown in the past, even just this season, that he can produce – um, I, you know, another, this is another one that it, it may not happen this week, but I really liked what I saw at a Zach Charbonnet with Seattle. Yeah. Uh, he came in because Walker was kind of nursing the, the calf injury. He didn't have a ton of snaps, but the, what he did with those snaps was amazing. I think I want to say 10 to 11 yards per carry. Yeah, he had like only about five carries yeah. and like 40, 50 yards. Yeah. But listen, when you draft a guy, when you already have Kenneth Walker and you draft a running back in the second round, mm -hmm. that means you have a lot of faith in him. So yeah. Charbonnet looked good, and in an offense that runs the ball, that's a good pick. I and like keep that in a mind, lot. He, he went to UCLA, but keep that in mind because I'm gonna, I have a wide receiver who also is from UCLA. Oh, okay, yeah. we'll learn about that. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the guy I'm not feeling, okay? So I Obviously, we all know Kirk Cousins. He's now got the season-ending Achilles injury in Minnesota. You're thinking probably, well, Alexander Madison's going to get a lot of volume. You might be thinking that, but here's why he's not a great play this week against Atlanta. So, you know, Atlanta, guess what? I mean, this is crazy. Atlanta has not given up a rushing TD to a running back on the ground this wow. season. Yeah. So, I mean, that's and, crazy. And Madison's and, not going to be the one to do it. <laughs> it's not exactly. And they've allowed the fewest receptions per game to running back. So this is not the week to think, oh, Madison's going to bust out because they got to rely more on the run game with Cousins out. Not happening. Plus, Akers already vultured a yeah. TD from him last week. So right. stay away from Alexander Madison. Yeah, and, and I right there, the same, probably, they're probably going to be ranked right next to each other. But our, And I hate to bash on a Vegas guy, but Ramondre Stevenson, yeah. another, he's just not getting it done. It's not impressive. And, and actually, New England looked pretty good. And uh, so I'm, I've been down on him. I'm not even going to start good. him. Okay. See, interesting stuff yeah. there. All right, guys, coming up after another break, we're going into wide receivers, tight ends. A lot of good information for you. Make sure you hang tight. Before we take another timeout, in week nine of 2002, this New England running back scored three touchdowns in a win versus Buffalo. He totaled 34.7 fantasy points and finished as the week's running back one. Who was it? The answer after the break. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you which New England running back scored three touchdowns in a win versus Buffalo back in week nine of 2002. The answer, running back Antoine Smith, who played for New England from 2001 to 2003. Welcome back to the Fantasy Goat. Okay, Jason, wide receivers, tell us who you like, who you're not feeling. All right, I mentioned the whole UCLA thing uh, with Charbonnet as a running back. I'm going the same with Jake Bobo. First of all, great <laughs> name. UCLA wide receiver plays for Seattle now. He has proven that even with DK Metcalf in the lineup, he can still be productive. He got a touchdown. And... For the second week in a row, including a game that I was at in New Orleans, yeah. these guys can't catch the ball. Chris Olave had a touchdown, bounced off of his helmet, and then missed another one. And it, it's, it's really driving me crazy because you know how good he can be. Right. And, so, he, and that, he had those legal issues, too. Yeah, but, right. But speaking of Bobo, he, you know, we loved Bobo. He's asking good questions, unlike the Stern Show, Bobo. Yeah, right, I just right. have to say that. <laughs> um, all right, here we go. So I'm feeling Jalen Waddle. I mean, uh, listen, this guy busted out, especially the week prior. He left early with that back injury, mm -hmm. and he had a great week. I mean, everybody wants a piece of the most exciting offense in the NFL, and I like him this week facing Kansas City in Frankfurt, Germany. And the guy I'm not feeling, Jordan Addison. Listen, this guy, past few weeks, 15, 10, 27, and 17 points in the past four weeks, but 
I'm kind of out on him now with Cousins out. We got to see what's going to happen with the quarterback play with Hall or yeah, Dobbs. Agreed. So I'm resting on him right now. And let's go with the tight ends. I'm going to stick with the same theme. Hawkinson, I got him in a couple leagues. Mm-hmm. He's tight end three behind Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey having a great season. But I got to be a little weary with no more Kirk Cousins under center. So I'm going to have to probably pay him in a couple weeks. Yeah. But I think he'll be okay. I think, if anything, uh, a lot of times these rookie quarterbacks will lean on the tight end as a security right. blanket. So I think he has a better chance. He hopefully, yeah. you know, and that's a good Addison. good theory. But yeah. you can re- expect a little regression. Sure. And the guy I'm feeling, let's just say it. I mean, I told you guys last week, Taysom Hill is legit tight end starter in fantasy. I just need to heed my own advice because I played Darren Waller oh, instead gosh. of Taysom Hill. Listen, I called it. He had two TDs on the ground, over 20 points. This guy is a fixture in New Orleans and in our offense, and I mm-hmm. love Taysom Hill. All right. Um, and I, I'm the same way. I, I went real high on another one. It was because it was Halloween weekend, so I went with uh, Trey McBride of Chucky <laughs> uh, and just kind of as a joke against you, and it right. turned out where he was – he was tight end number one, so keep the ball rolling with him. It will be a new quarterback, but, uh, you know, all good. And then, uh, uh, you know, Kyle Pitts, he's done better, but you kind of we've seen his ceiling. It's not that great. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I think people got excited about him, and it's sort of false hopes. Hey, the McBride call, that was, oh, that was a call, of Chucky. my friend. There you go. <laughs> Guys, coming up after a short break, we're talking with Dr. Nathan Knott. We're breaking down all the critical injuries to some of your big-time fantasy players. All right, so now we got to head off to our friend, Dr. Nathan Notwell. He's got some great advice for us. Doctor, great to be with you again. All right, let's start here. Matthew Stafford, thumb injury. We all saw it with the thumb on the helmet. Tell us what's going on there. So we saw Matt Stafford hit his thumb on an opposing player's helmet. After that, he was knocked out for the game. They did an MRI, and they said that he has a UCL injury. That UCL is the inside ligaments of the thumb, and it's really important for grip strength. So you can imagine why that's an issue for a quarterback. The good thing is, is that they got an MRI on it, and that tells us that after they told us that it was good news, and then they declared him day-to-day, is that there's only inflammation of that ligament. There's not a discrete tear, which would end up being a four- to six-week injury. All right, and lastly, Doc, uh, we got to talk about this. My dude, Devon A. Chan, I can't, I'm crossing my fingers. When is this dude coming back, and what is he going to look like? He had likely an MCL injury, which the last update we got is that he is running ahead of schedule, and they expect him to be fully recovered. I think that would be very odd for them to put out misinformation in that regard when they already have a competent running back, so there's not really any gamesmanship in that regard. And the injury of that MCL, which is that interior ligament of the knee, is also known to heal back very well. I think they just took it conservatively and placed him on IR because they knew that they had another competent running back to take his place for as long as necessary. All right, thanks so much, Dr. Nathan. Now we'll go follow him. TikTok, Instagram, at Fantasy Docs. I'm meteorologist Sam Argier with your Week 9 weather highlights. As you set your fantasy lineup, there are a few games to watch when it comes to the weather. The first one in Germany, Kansas City playing Miami. Some rain and wind around Frankfurt. Also keeping an eye on some rain showers at Lambeau for the Green Bay game Sunday. And then a Monday night game in New York City. The Bolts visiting for an AFC divisional matchup. Some showers possible around the Meadowlands on Monday night. We'll start across the pond, though, with 50s for the game but between Kansas City and Miami. Also, the wind playing a part. Now, here's the deal with this game. There is a retractable roof on the stadium there. So if it's closed, the weather won't play as big of a part. But if that roof's open, certainly a wet ball and some swirling wind inside the stadium there for the kickers in that game. We'll go to the late morning, early afternoon games, and the biggest weather concern will be at Lambeau. Not talking snow. We could certainly be seeing that this time of year at Lambeau, but rain showers in the 40s and then other games looking at pretty smooth sailing. Cleveland and Arizona, Baltimore and Seattle and New England versus Washington looking at 50s there. Late afternoon, early evening games on Sunday. Carolina, it's mild in the 70s and also Philadelphia versus Dallas looking good there. Sunday night at 
50 degrees in Cincinnati versus Buffalo. And then here's that Monday night game. The colors are green. That's some scattered showers around the northeast as the bolts come to town. Also dealing with some wind at MetLife on Monday night with temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. So not a super active weekend of weather for week nine, but a few of those games being played outdoors may have an impact on your fantasy team. Jason and Mike will send it back to you. Oh, I love that new piece to the show. Thank mm -hmm. you so much to Sam, Jason. Coming up after the break, it's GOAT lineup time. We got to see who won a tough Halloween matchup. Welcome back, kids. All right, GOAT lineup time. So this is where Jason and I go head to head. We can only use one player one time throughout the season. So we got to keep funneling through different QBs, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. Jason, last week you had my number again during Halloween. I only scored 44.5 points. It's now 5-3 to three you, 3-5 three to five me. You're uh, sitting up uh, nicely I, in first place. I think I'm five unanswered. Are I think you? I'm on a roll, but you can't mess, Mike, with the scary lineup that I had. <laughs> I mean, Lamar, Lamar Jackson plays for the scary Baltimore Birds. Uh, Damian Pierce, uh, scary Terry, right. and Trey McBride of Chucky. You're not that was gonna, a good call. Thank you. That was a really good call. Yeah. This week, I'm going more normal. This is just a, a normal slate yeah, for me. Yeah. Uh, we'll have Derek Carr, who's had three games over 300 yards passing. Gus the bus, uh, three touchdowns last week. Yeah, yeah. Nico Collins should have a bounce back game. They're playing at home in Houston. And then Cole Komet had a ton of uh, volume. Right. See, uh, I got I to gotta catch up. I yeah. mean, I'm starting to get scared. Uh, speaking of uh, <laughs> Halloween, I mean, I got I to gotta come up with something. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm riding the Minshew mania. Okay. That's what I'm doing. I, I think he's going to have a nice week against Carolina. I got Alvin Kamara versus Chicago. I think he'll have a good game. Adam Thielen against Indianapolis. He's been mm -hmm. getting a lot of targets from the number one pick in Bryce Young. And then I'm uh, stealing your guy, Trey McBride okay. against Cleveland. I uh, need a big win here. I'm looking for that for the five record. We'll see what All happens. Right. We'll see you guys next time on the Fantasy Go.